Hi everybody, welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to try to make a rounded oval, double sided pendant from these ten agoro. Is it's like it's ten penny Israeli pennies or cents. Fine fact. Um. British call it pennies. Americans call it call it cents because it's one percent out of a hundred as a dollar, right? So this is the Israeli. You can call it ten cents. It's ten agarots. The camera is not focusing right. Anyhow, try to nail it. I did this before. It came out all right, but like I'm trying to do it better. So let's get starting. silverish even though it's it's a mix of all kinds of metal I um, different kinds of metals but it should soften it up okay so it got turned black I didn't get it from the other side but I think that was enough heat you know I'm using using this sucker so yeah I mean you don't need much just uh, change you know change the color and I think you should be alright so let's see now I'm going to be using the, the ring stretcher See here, and um, let's see how it goes. I never used this machine before. That's the truth. It's my first time using it. So I made these uh, from um, from uh, fitness straps. You know those rubber bands you pull. So it should add like Teflon because I don't want to start covering this time every time I'm going to do now this ex this. As I'm just trying it out, I don't want to be, you know, f wrapping it around with Teflon, and every time that should keep the keep the all the engravings in there nicely. But uh, we'll see. Now I have this. This machine doesn't come with much, but I have one of these metal marbles right we used to get these out of i think this is out of a gear out of a, i'm sorry out of a ball bearing like a big bearing there's a decent bearing a decent ball i mean iron ball and um yeah we used to get these when we were young this generation the new generation has no idea what i'm talking about but we used to take these out of mouses remember out of mice as a computer mouse right it used to have like a round rubber thing around it coated rat rubber we used to bite them and just take off the rubber and get this nice iron marble rounds yeah we used to play marbles with them and always win because these used to knock everything out love them it just has a nice it just has a nice feeling to it you know what i mean okay so how are we gonna do this i gotta check which one seems to be that seems all right So wrapping again. I'm just gonna try put one of these in, and then one above. Now I want, I want the tail side up. Why is it not focusing right? Let's see. Oh, much better. Why did I not do it till now? 
So look, yeah, that's nice. It'll be nice because if you look at the original color, after I clean this, it'll come back. But look how beautiful these coins are, actually. See, you have the menorah or the Hanukkiah. It's like a, it's an old lamp, right? Old uh, Judaism, uh, Jewish uh, symbol. Yeah, so it's beautiful. So hopefully I'll get this facing out, the tail's facing out, and the face, who cares, you know, just be inside. So I can, move, I can make both of them and put them together. I did it before, again, I did it before, it came out pretty decent. But now I have some more silver uh, welding, uh, I'm, I call it silver solder, so hopefully it'll be stronger. And this is, I'm probably going to do one for a friend. So we'll just get at it and see how it goes. So I'm going to round it, right? So I'm going to put the, f the tails down. I'm centering it right. I should put in a bigger one. Let me see. Does that fit in there? Let's put in one that fits. You can always work it out more. And then let's try one that fits. Yeah, that seems right. It's just fitting in there. It's flush. Because they're, these are these are contracated, right? These are like synced in, so you have a little mushroom on the side, cone shaped. You could get it in. I think this is the right one. Let's put that on there. So maybe I should go one more. Just as I have enough to play with every time it wants to jump out. Yeah, and I could go there and back, so make it deeper. I think this will be okay. That seems pretty flush. Oh, this rubber thing is coming right out. Okay, so I'm just going to have to just do as so. I eyeball it before because this thing is not transparent. And we'll put the ball on the iron thing on, then I'll put another one on it. And no, just put one on it above like so. That should be okay. Really, I don't really care about the side. Maybe they're just... Uh, so this side could be facing inside. I can see it, but maybe the rubble will help it from sliding. Or not. Maybe I should just take it off and like that. I can see better what I'm doing. Okay, let's give it a go. Oh, this is a oh man. This is you see. It's a problem making videos. You forget your name. Okay, let's do this again. Put the right one that I nailed. Hopefully it's softer. Let's ink it in there. And let's go for it. What can happen, you know? Well, this tool is really probably not made for this. It's more for stretching and rings. But hopefully this has got soft enough. Hey, give it a try. But don't break it. This is not the best one. This is an Italian one. It's not Italian one. I'm sorry. It's a Chinese one. Let's see what it did. I have no idea where that went. This is below. It didn't make a perfect cut out of it. So it's beautiful. It just didn't. Yeah, but it did do the job. See, oh, that's nice. So, focus it again. It actually did a nice job. But yeah, you can, I see, I can center the. Center it more. Maybe I should try it without the rubber thing, like that. I can really get nice and flush as I push down. Because when I'm pushing down, right before the rubber, okay, so it didn't let it preventing it. it I mean, it kept it nice with all the stuff on it. 
of all the engravings on it. Oh, detox it perfectly. It didn't. Yeah. But you can see it's not centered as I want to. Oh. No, these are cheap. Just do a few more. Do I get really nice? Now, I'm going to be sanding it like this, like so. I'm going to be sanding it, right? That I can make, make both of them meet perfectly. Then at the end, I don't have this, I don't have this angle here. It'll be nice and flush. And then it'll just meet here in the rim. And when I solder it, it'll be nice. Because I'm going to have to drill, I'm going to have to, after I make two of these and make them nice and flush and they meet, so I'm gonna have to make a little hole here, you know, file out to put a to put the connection, you know, for the chain. Okay, so I'm now gonna be quiet and just do a few more of them. This came out okay. Yes, it's like this 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 lamp this should be more on the side, in the middle. I mean, really, I don't really have much because on the side it's pretty close. If you can see, it's pretty close on the edge here. So also here the same. But maybe I could twist it on the other side. You put the the metal ball, iron, the, yeah, the metal, the iron ball on the side, and then it will stretch the side a little bit more so it should be the, the lamp should be a little bit more centered because they're gonna have to be like this right you have to be double sided make it also one side but yeah oh, I like to make it round because it makes it cool okay we'll try a few more we'll see But it did nail it pretty, pretty nice. It was fairly easy. I mean, I thought that I'm gonna have an issue stretching it. I didn't think this is. Where is this made? It says it's written. It's made in. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's like a real Italian. I think it's Chinese. But. There's a label here, but it doesn't mention anything. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't give me any... I can see. I mean, the, the cast iron is nice, but all... But, uh, but the rest, all the other connections are like, you know... They could have done a better better job seeing, seeing it or whatever, filing it, polishing it nicer. So oh, hey, we'll see. Got one down. Might as well inhale it again. I'm gonna fix it. Silver, I know how silver looks better when I inhale it. This is, I don't know what's in there copper, zinc, tin, who knows? I can look it up. Uh, yeah, if I remember right, mostly copper and then tin and then some, maybe zinc, stuff like that. So, I can like I can round it up, try to give it a little bit more. 
try to fix it a little bit better. You see, there is a... Um, let's see. Camera again. Let me try to get it focused. Okay, I'm going to try, try, maybe, smaller one, for the old one, for the one I did before, just, uh, let's try to see if I can, let me see. Let me stretch it out. Well, that's pretty good. I mean, that's that's pretty close. The first one I did was pretty close where I wanted it. Yeah, I don't see any reason to to press it more in and to make it rounder. That's pretty. I mean, you can give it a try. Just that'll be after when I sand off. When I sand it down like that. And get off the the born end. So yeah, let's give it one more press. And this time I could try the little piece that came off. Maybe just put it in there. I'm not that worried about it. You know, if you're doing a silver dollar. You really want to make sure you have all the nice details there and, you know, center that. You better see. My first time using it. So it's not mounted anywhere. The bolts are not mounted. But next time, as if I'm going to use this more, I'm for sure, mount it down. At least on a piece of wood, I could, I don't have to hold both hands, I could just yank it, you know what I mean? Okay, let's get another one of these. Okay. Same drill. Oh, there's more on the other side. I forgot about that. Are there different sizes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is more. This is more counter, and this is this is a shallower. Oh yeah. Oh, so maybe I should try another set. Cause I'm gonna have to put these together. So I'm gonna keep stick to the same side. But maybe next set that I make, I will flip it, and it will give a, a slight different counter to it. Okay, where was I? Seems alright. No, no, no. I'll try to do an album without the plastic, without the rubber, just to see if I'm losing any details. Because it is nicer to do it. It's nicer to do without the rubber. They can actually see if your coin is pretty flush. I got luckily on lucky on this one. I mean, I could see. I could see a little bit where I could get better at this, where it's not perfectly rounded. And got more of a punch in a certain side. Yeah, but now without the rubber, let's try without the rubber or Teflon, right? Because now I could control, see, I can see that's flush, you know what I mean? You can see that's laid out nice inside. So when we start pressing, it doesn't really matter, right? Because the bounce, the ball is rounded completely. Perfect. But if you have a slight, if you put in a slight at an angle, that's the direction the ball is going to push. And therefore, it's going to stretch it uneven, right? So, let's go for it. We'll see. Now, these are cheap. Again, they're cheap. It's only 10, 10 agarotes. 
It's like uh, not even three pennies, three cent American U.S. cent. Get it? Apply some pressure. Let's see that. Okay. Yeah, it looks like it seems like it's okay sitting in there. The second you touch it with the ball, you put pressure on it. Doesn't really want to go anywhere. And you can spin this. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Oh. So now as I'm going down, you can rotate the whole dish, the whole bowl, disc, and you, and you can fix your center. See, because I'm now I'm pushing down. I see I'm a little to the off, to the left. I'm going to try to... Just like this. Just by releasing the pressure of the thing. and Yeah, we'll see. See what it does. For a cheap Chinese machine, it actually works. I know that it doesn't go up and down nice, but uh, so let's see. Yeah. I think this one came even nicer, but yeah, but you could see, I could see for sure. You see, there's a, there's a difference between the rubber. See how it, it did some little damage there at the end of the lamp and this one didn't this one has more detail you see there's more friction but it did come out nice because I can see now exactly what I'm doing maybe it's just because I gave a little I I gained like one millimeter without having that rubber there so maybe that's why but I'll try it again for rubber because it's a shame because they're beautiful I have like I chose I chosen uh, beautiful coins that have all the details on it and here I did lose a little bit you see in the end of the the, po the base you see that here down in the base of the lamp yeah 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 so, so, yeah, so let's try another one but you can see that here is it's more folk it's more centered because I had more visible on it this one, the, the one that came out now as well, not as good. I did center, you see, on the sides a little bit better. So, just give it a go. Colors changing, pinkish, silverish, whitish. Yeah, I think we're good there. I think the whole thing is nice. Yeah, I don't want to do too much because again, it's not silver, and it could like start melting. You know what I mean? So I think we're good. In a bigger dish, that water is getting hot. Okay, better pull. It's nothing to compare to the heat of the coin. That's almost like 2,000 degrees, right? Celsius, almost. That flame. I think we're good. Okay, I can go for it again. And I will use the rubber. You just sit it in there nicely before. The thing is, this rubber wants to pop out. Um, you know what? Maybe I should just give the minimum on it because I it is bothering me visually. See how I'm laying it down in the dish, making me 
making me crazy. Let's give it just enough for it to. You know what I mean? I want to make sure I'm laying it down perfect inside. Because that's how the stretch will go when you start pressing it down. This again. The folks doing it out there with Teflon are actually doing it the right way because you get the same amount of coverage around the coin just to give it like a nice cushion and prevent from prevent the what's the names the details to get erased or squeezed squished or stretched but then they don't have to deal because this thing wants to bounce out this rubber <laughs> Teflon has a tendency to just stick there okay so I think we're okay now. Let's give it a shot. Now again, try to focus. Try to get the camera a little bit there. No. Sorry for all the shaking on the camera. Huh? Just I want to. I have to get this done, and I had no patience today. I'm doing a good setup for the camera, so shame on me. But you know that's the drill. I mean, this is the press, but you know what I mean. Okay, so it looks like I'm okay, you know. Move this disc around the front. Because when you start pressing it, stretching it, you don't really have a much, you don't have much play. It looks like we're okay. Just rotating, make sure I'm straight in the coin. Let's give it a shot. Yeah. Yeah. We kept the detail. See here in the bottom. Here on the bottom. Here on the bottom, you can see more de more detail. This one didn't get much. First one was okay. This one's okay. Second one got eaten up here or squeezed up here. But the third one. Yeah, it's okay. So I should we should keep doing it with the, should keep doing it with the rubber. And now let's give it a little bit more of a, of a sink. Even though it seems like the second one was pretty decent. But you can see it's more centered. So, I will try to keep this just, the second one just, you know, it should be the same like the, the first one. And I'm going to have to put them together like this. Basically, see the gap here. See the gap in the middle. We're gonna, I'm going to sand that out. Sand that off and then I'll just have the ends touching. It's pretty close. I'll just leave it like that and give it a test. I could always give it after I sand it, I'll have a better feel. Better feel for it.
Okay, what grid should I use? I guess it doesn't matter. It could be rough. In the beginning, Let's see if I have some rough stuff. I'm just gonna leave this stuff 60 grade. It's for not so comfortable because I should really have a straight strip of it. I could just go, you know. Okay, but we're not, we're not, we're not gonna be ticking off much. I mean, it should go pretty fast. Maybe I should inhale it now, inhale it now, it'll be easier for it to, uh, to, let's see. time be patient no big deal get your fingers but you know my father once put an article on a, on a woodworking magazine and you know they're talking about table saws and stuff and this guy this is years ago before there even was such a thing as you know common comments right like you know in the media we're talking about newspaper stuff so anyhow he got a comment I don't know if it was on the phone or in the book or in the paper but this is a story this guy asked him, hey, you know, if you're cutting, like, down a table saw, you should put on those butcher iron gloves, you know, the ones that they use for doing very close cuts on, on, on frozen meat and stuff. Some butchers use them. You know, it's like a chain. It's like a, it's like a mesh metal gloves. <laughs> so I don't even want to tell you guys what was my father's answer, but basically, <laughs> you know... You know, I mean, like, if you're going to be working on, a, on on blades and stuff that are rough, make sure you have good grip, better off without gloves than with gloves, because those gloves will get sucked right into the blade. And then you've got no way for you to take your fingers out of it, you know I mean? you got to be able to move. So what I'm saying is if it's, if it's okay and you get a little bit roughed up by sanding, you know... That's the fun part of it, you know. So skin and hair grows, that's what's nice. In two weeks, you're good. But you just have a better grip, because doing it with gloves is annoying, right? Rotating the coin once in a while should have an even press when I'm doing. But I could see that this coin came out asymmetrical compared to the other one as where it's pressed. So it's a little bit funky when I'm moving it around. I have some plots it's flatter and higher. Maybe that's okay. You know, you do, you go, the first one you go to school, and after a while, you know, if you do a do half a dozen of them, you get pretty good at them, right? So, guys. You know, just go for it. Just practice and don't worry about every little detail. You do a few of them, you'll be good. You'll get good at it. Yeah, it's, it's coming off, you see. It's coming off. This, this this lighting here is completely throwing off my focus every time I gotta tap the phone because I am recording there for phone but it's it's coming off so you just follow you just follow subconference and see where you where you're taking off more or less and then just press on that side more and you'll see here a little less and up there a little bit more so now when I lay it down just press on this side a little bit more you know what I mean By doing this, I'm basically making both of them match together nice. 
And then the solder will be way more gentle and elegant. Um, yeah. And now, because I didn't squeak, I didn't press it right, I didn't stretch it right. So even though I'm taking off everything nice and flush, there's some places you can see it's higher. Because the ball, when it went down, metal ball, when it went down pressing on it, it squeezed in some. I can fix it. You just just put the thing back again and nail it again and put it in and make sure it should be easier now because it's already it's already sunk in. So now it'll hold the shape and just like in the vise. In the vise, just when you put the ball down in it. Let me check. Go down the measurement. Because we're already we're already rounded. Here like so. When I gonna squeeze when I'm gonna uh, stretch it again. Just center it where I want it to be and give it a slight stretch. Maybe I should go one more down as well because cause then it will give me more area on the inside. See, it gives me more area on the shoulder. So when I, when I stretch it now, it will stretch exactly where I want. I mean, you can play with it, right? You can do the whole, whole shebang. But yeah. Okay, so I'm going to sand the next part, the other one that's going to match this one. And then after that, I'll know where exactly where I want to fix either of them. You know, just try, yeah, something like that. So let's see what I'm doing. What I'm doing. Am I gonna sand it more? Uh, yeah. I'll try stretch a little bit more here, and then I'll just sand it off. I can I go and I can hit it now. File here. You see, there's little some high spots. Hit it for file, but then I'm gonna ruin my flat sanding. So, let's see, there's another one. Get some sanding. Yeah, you can tell. Yeah, this versus this one. You can tell. This one was the first one we did, but this is the first one we sanded. And this one, I just went for it. I didn't really care. And here I was more picky about centering it, and you know, maybe I moved it. So sometimes, even if it's the first one, and you just like do it simple and well, like easy, it comes out way better than when you start playing around. I know that you're playing around, we start playing around because you're trying to be more meticulous and try to get it like, 
bad or right, but it's just uh just just a fact that happens to people that you know create stuff, build stuff. Sometimes when it's easy, it goes pretty nice. But maybe this get this is yeah this is a, this is contoured a little bit. So I will contour this way a little bit more. Cause uh, this feels straight. Feels nice and so let me go just and inhale this again and contour it again. Cause I if I'm already sanding it, I want to make sure that we're not you know they're gonna match nicely. You know what I mean? So I'll just go and do that again. See it now because it's rounded and I could, it has more surface getting around the stuff around it. It happens way faster versus when just sitting flat on the stone. Okay, let's do this again. Try to make it even like the other one. So, what did we do last time? Last time we went down one from the largest to one smaller. It's not gonna give me a break. I just, every time I put these in, they just get a nice round cut. Okay, I guess it'll be okay like this. I just, it's gonna be a shame to. Nah. I guess that's what it cost. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna go for these rubber stuff. Okay, I'll give it a press. A squeeze. If you have the ball, iron ball, sitting on it, it's heavy enough for it not to move around when you center it and then you put it in there. Yeah. I can see it's off. See it's off. Hopefully this thing will do something. Yeah, it feels, yeah, it feels better. It feels rounded, better. Yeah, it feels way better. I mean, just holding it, you feel like they're, 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 they match, you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Back to that. Just eyeballing on the side here, just eyeballing on the side as I stand, because there is a rim. You can, there's a, obviously there's a rim that you can see. Okay. There's a rim that we didn't, we didn't. You can see there's a rim around this that will give you a good reference to how deep you're sanding. You know what I mean? Even though we squeezed it, stretched it, so. Yeah, I mean, I got most of it off. Got most of it off, you know, putting it flat. And I could just go in and just clean off the edges, see where.
No, I would have wished they make these little ones. I mean, I saw once in a while you bump it, they're very expensive, but just make them like cold file, cold steel files. These are nice. These cut. These cut nicely. bulky but it's nice to use a sharp knife better off a big sharp knife than a small dull knife right <laughs> so yeah and I can hit it with, uh, with the Dremel with this. and I will I'm just trying to get it you know sort of close to the other one It's okay if you're putting the whole thing and you only want to clean out one side. You just put more pressure on that angle, you know what I mean? Like so, I'm just putting the pressure on my between my thumb now and the file. And the rest, even though it's touching, it's not really doing much. It's more where my pressure is. So you're like If you're doing like gold pieces, yeah, you won't want to do that. Because everything is very delicate and expensive. Uh, here, I think we're okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's coming out. Just putting the pressure where my thumb is. Like that, I'm not really taking off much on the other side here. Uh, everyone picks their turf. Everyone picks the way how they like handling tools. Oh, okay. Like this, I don't, I'm not really concerned about some skin, and I think we're all good. Yeah, it looks tricky. Do it some pressure on the front. Yeah, that's it's nice. Okay, next one. The next one I could, you know what, I'll just go off the file. Because on the paper, I don't really see. On the paper, you take off the rough, like just get off the big, you know, the gross of it. And then by hand, it's easier just to look at it. And it's, and like you should, it's nice. You look at it as you spin. Everything is nice and flat and e almost even. If everything gets even, you can go back to the paper and just go straight up and down. Even though this is, I mean, there's no big difference. It's just, you know, a minute more, a minute less. And it's whatever you pick to do will be okay. But the file will correct it when you're spinning as you're going. Can you, you'll, you, in the paper, you have to look below. It's like not comfortable, you know. The file, you can actually see. And now that I know everything is nice and yeah, let's get it again with the paper, nice and flush. Make sure the paper does not jump in. Put equal pressure down, not like this or not like this, because your thumb will be stronger than your index finger and the way you pull. If you put even pressure, I'll be okay. And that's nice. Let's see if they meet. It's a good pair. Yeah, pretty nice, I'll tell you that. Pretty nice, you see. Let's get a focus the camera. No focus on it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's coming out pretty nice, you see. They meet nicely. And wherever they don't meet, you know. 
Let's go and hit it again. But now we're good. Now we have a nice round pendant. It could be a nice round pendant. Double sided coin. Again, I choose the both sides of the on this particular one. The nice side out. And no matter how it spins on your chain, you always get it. And now we're, I'm going to clean it. And not going to do in the video. Maybe, you know. But I'll get back to it and clean it. And mark it. I'll make sure I have both of, of the... Of the Signs, you know, perpendicular to each other. Mark it on the top. Mark it. And then after, you know, when I start assembling it, I always go back to that mark. And there where the thing is going to be. The holder thing, the loop, whatever you call it. Easy. A few pennies and you get yourself a nice... Nice jewelry, cause for you to, for somebody to engrave all this, if all the details, and people still could recognize it as a coin or something. I mean, engrave all those details. It takes some time, you know what I mean. Unless you have a jig, you want to whack it in there and you're good, like the way they stamp this from the beginning. It's just a press, you know, wank, you know. But um, it's nice for a few pennies. You can make, you know, your own current, your, your, the currency in your state or your country pop out as nice jewelry because whoever's around will be familiar with it, you know what I mean? Okay, so I gave it a little clean. I cleaned it a little bit with the with soap and water just to get some debris, whatever, off of it. But um, uh, basically... It's not silver or gold, so I'm not so worried about, uh, you know, getting it perfectly, perfectly for the soldering. Again, now I have this little bronze pipe. I want to use this for the loop. It will be connected to the top for the chain. So there will be a loop going direction of the chain. And there will be other connection between the loop and the coins. On the opposite like you'll have you know what I mean so like that the chain will always be in the right direction and it won't be twisting on itself all the time now this copper this uh, bronze pipe I want to give it a little bend that the loop will be on an angle a slight angle that will follow the chain because a lot of times if you're putting a, a, a gold silver chain or 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 a, a string it tends to get like stuck on it and like you know what I mean so if I give it a small bow into it it will always follow the pull of gravity so let's try to do that I'm just gonna put it so inside the thing I mean there's all kinds of ways to do it I'm just gonna try to give it a small small bent when I cut it, I don't have to play with it too much. Just try. Yeah, I think that'll. Yeah, that will do it. Okay, so he gave it now. Oh, kind of uh, bent it too much. I know there's better ways to do it, but we're just doing it for the video. See. And then I could stretch it out a slight bit. You know what? Maybe I won't. Maybe I won't use that side because it went too much. Okay, just cut this. Sorry, I'm left-handed, so it kind of blocks the camera.
So I cut it on one side. Yeah, I'm not going to use that bend angle. I'll maybe later just tweak it. I cut an angle because I want the loop to be like that, like a V shape, kind of right. Now I cut the edge off, end off. Now I'll have an easier way to, to cut it. What's remaining because I got to hold on to the thing. Now I want to give it a fairly nice amount of metal of material because uh, if I'm, I'm, I'm as I mentioned, I'm making this for a friend and he likes free diving and swimming and sports, and so he's gonna be yanking on it and he will actually use it for a while, like the previous pendants I made for him <laughs> in the past of the years, you know. So, um, yeah, so I'm gonna try and make it. Not aggressive looking, I'm trying to still keep it, you know, nice and delicate, but fairly strong. I want some material there, I don't want to, like, because what you see usually on connections between, um, you know, uh, jewelry, they always feel like they want to break. I know it depends how the soldering was, if what kind of solder you use, and, and people shouldn't yank on pendants, but... But this will be going through, you know, water and ocean and stuff, so I I want to make it fairly strong. I'm not using the regular methods of the, you know, people have that, I don't, I don't know the name. I call it that little piece of wood that you, you cut and you can hold, you know, cause you can follow right on it, cut right on it. It's nice, a little tongue you attach to the table. But you know, I just work with what I have and I make tools and whatever is comfortable for me, you know what I mean? As, as far as I see it, if I have a set of pliers, vice grip pliers, even though they're nice and good and expensive and like a nice for a nice pair, I have no problem, you know, welding in, turning into something else, or chopping it up, you know, a tool is a tool. Uh, you know, I use it as I go. So that's my philosophy of tools. And if you, if you can manage, you know, to just um, figure it out as you go, you know, why not, right? You don't always have to buy the dedicated tool. Some tools, you do need it, but you do, you do need it to be, like, prefer, uh, perfectly precise. But... If you know what you're doing, you can just, you know, you just make them as you go. Okay, good. So we have a nice little loop here. Let's see, one side is thin, one side is thicker. Obviously, the thicker side will be up. Like this, and the thinner will be attached to the pendant. I'll just give it a nice little clean, make it a little bit nicer, and off we go. Switch hands because I'm a lefty again. Yeah, I want to keep a nice triangle, nice loop shape. Do with a file. I guess like this is okay. Again, I want to leave, I want to leave enough material that when he yanks on it, you should have a nice curve, connection, but also should have a nice, you know, thick enough to put any chain, 
you know, the same size, like up to a certain amount of uh, size of a changer you want to put on that thing anyhow, plus it should be fairly strong. Example right, file if you want to get it more accurate, but uh, this is this will be okay. I polish this and I go through the whole thing after I'm solder it. I'll give it a nice polish and work the ends, but I just want to avoid as much as I could up to the solder. Because you know, we all know it's annoying to clean later. And you don't want to, you know, mistakenly touch the details and stuff. Let's take off the rough side. I'm doing a little bit opposite. So I'm left-handed, so just that you could get it in the camera. It's funny because I write my left hand by punch with my right hand. That's a little bit weird, right? Also, growing up when I was playing soccer or playing the guitar, I don't—I mean, I don't play the guitar that well. But basic chords, I always found myself. Meaning to the regular side, you know, to the left, to the right side, like like the majority of the people, because that's what was available. So I developed some skills on my right hand, even though, again, I do right with my left hand. So that's some issues of lefties, you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. So that's coming out okay. figure out a way why I connected what I connected this and I went there ready ahead and I gave it a mark I gave a mark in the center where I went later when I'm gonna solder it I give it a mark and then I'm gonna have to file out or drill out because I want to put the loop the loop, the loop should be like this, going with the direction of the chain, or, or yeah, the string. But then there has to be something going the opposite. So it connect between this. I could connect it just like this, but I think maybe a little post there will be nice because then the loop could move freely with the chain. I don't know if it's necessary, but I'll try. Do you guys a favor in doing these little tiny things and you have all kinds of tools running around. I mean, if you have a spotless shop, not like me, doesn't matter. But if you do like me, so give it like, put a string on it till, put a little piece of wire on it till you start using it. Because if this thing goes flying again, goes flying, you have to go through the whole process. It's annoying. If you get it nice and easy and fast, keep on to it. <laughs> when you're ready to assemble it, Take it off, but it's nice if it falls, it doesn't go anywhere, it's easy to find. Okay, so I cut myself a little piece of the same bronze pipe. Give it a nice sand. Because I want to I wanna keep it almost the same material. Look. 
to be solder should have difference of the silver around it but I should, it should basically stay, stay the same color. Yeah. Okay. Now I wanna I wanna bend that around the loop. I bend that around the loop and put that in between the coins on a like on a V-shape angle. That when I solder it, it stays in there and, and it can't pull back out of the hole, you know, it shouldn't have a weak point. I'll go and give it a nice bend in the middle, wherever the, you know, there's better tools, you can use those pliers that have like, this kind of, this kind of, you know, when it, it tapers, so you could, uh, you could, you could plier it and twist it. Well, you no, know, whatever you pick up is okay. You go and give it a little twist in the middle. So then that should fit. That should fit inside the loop. Again, trying to keep it fairly strong, fairly strong. Just keeping that, keeping that punch in the middle, so it lets it stay free. See, as I'm shaping it, because I do want, I want this thing to sit inside of the coins like this. As I close it and solder it, there will be a little hole here. We said. We'll carve. We'll file that out. But like it should sit like this inside, or you know, I'll I'll tweak it a little bit. That'll be better. But uh, but then it prevents it from yanking out. You know what I mean? Even though there'll be solder there, but still, you know, I should want I wanted to have as much uh, surface tension it could. So I'll go and tune that and get back to you guys.
when I finish it, I can go in there with the Dremel or yeah, and sand it a little bit, you know, file a little bit off. Should be look should look a little bit more you know, a little bit more gentle, a little more delicate. All kinds of tools you can use. I just use this one. And it should be okay. Give it a twist. Always keeping the punch inside there. Doesn't let me close too much. The what's a face? Yeah, did I get more grip? I think we're pretty good. See? I got I got surface for inside. And it's gonna sit. It's gonna sit like this like this inside the coin yeah and then I could go around and clean around there you know make it nice but I mean give a little you know take off a little bit of the edges just to make it more delicate but uh, should be alright okay so after I decided to make it little bow shape then it'll be flush with the, with the connections so we'll just give the, the coins a little grinding in from in, from in it'll have a night it will close on nice onto the bow and we'll see how that works so we gave it uh, ahead of time remember we gave a little mark on the top and we know the kind of that's the that's you know that's the center. Give it some grinding. Let's see if it's too hot to use these. Let's see if I don't have to use these it's better. I don't like using them only when it gets like really hot. You know what I mean? It's getting hot, right?
little gap there. Maybe we need a little bit more. Let's see. There's a little bit more of a gap. Getting there. Remember always to eyeball it, because you, you measure twice, you cut once, you're right? You ain't getting back, going back, so you gotta just remember once in a while to look at it. Just using a cheap rock, because uh, why not? It does a job. This is big surface, so yeah. Getting there. Whatever you can save, whatever you can save doing now before and then later polishing when everything's already set. Yeah, no, that's the basics. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's worth putting in a few more seconds and just, you know, not have to worry later on. Sometimes it's easier doing it by file because it's it's slower, but it, it it's like it's you know it doesn't jiggle around. But you know I have the tool, I use it. Yeah, it seems like we're okay. Better gap. And now it's sitting flush. Soldering will be the tri trick. Soldering will be a tricky without it moving, but I think we'll be okay.
See now they're both nice and flush. Um, yeah, I think we're gonna prepare for soldering. Okay, so this is um, liquid borax. Never used it before. This is a tricky one because I don't really want to be clamping, um, clamping, uh, you know, wire around uh, and having the issue of maybe it sticking with the borax around the little, all the little engravings on the coins. So I'm gonna try to make it, you know, wet with the thing stick. I know I'm putting a lot of solver. Is is a lot of solder, this is 75% silver solder, so it's like a strong solder. Um, but we'll give it a try, you know, what can happen. try using q-tips just like the just like you get it you know what I mean fairly wet I don't want it going all around I yeah, this is not going to be fun for my first time. Uh, we're doing a lot of stuff here the first time. The tool, the solder, thick solder. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's gonna be a bit tricky. I don't know how to clamp it down. I mean, I didn't get video and all that. This is gonna be a mess. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. That's my thing. You know what, maybe I should go and make a little hole in that, in that rock, in that, whatever this e stuff is, that it will sit flusher, you know what I mean, because it's bouncing all around. Let me go and do that. Okay, so I got it off camera, I did make a little hole there in the rock. Yeah, I don't know if it's aligned the best. Looks pretty close. And listen, I could always open it up and do it again. Let's see how it goes.
hit it again that side. Looks like it did the job, you know what I mean? Let's give it another dice of that little one. Some there. Dip it in the sucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joint. Tricky, tricky. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Hopefully the other side as well. Should I risk it? Let me see. Hold on for a second and pop it into the water. We will see. It looks like it went okay. Just hope I'm hoping that's aligned both sides. I mean there's not that much error there, because even if it's a few degrees off, it doesn't matter. The pendant's always gonna be moving, right? I know I know I used a lot of silver in the beginning. But oh this is light. Okay, so Yeah, I get a nice seal. I can clean it up and put some more around. Loosen up the, the pendant here in the top of it. It looks like it's sealed nice, you know. It's just tricky because they're like, I put that much of solder. I mean, I could get solder, liquid solder to silver. Um, and then just rub it on, right? But here I had that kind of the wire. So it gave me a little gap. But I mean, here, now that's solid. And I could play around, and I could hold it and pull it. So I could probably put some more and give it extra boot, extra. But it came out nice, huh? Okay, I'll give it a wide, clean it up, see what I want to do with it. Okay, guys, so you know, this is a big metal, this is a big chunk of metal, and this is very tiny, so it turned out to be just one big chunk. So I taped it up, I'll file it down, polish it up, and then uh, just. Focus it. And I'll just make a hole and settle for that. So it won't be flex flexible, but the chain is in the right direction. Yeah, I just sucked up all that silver. Okay, guys. Um, so it turned into solid. Yeah, again, I spent some more... Uh, silver on it, I feel the weight in it already, sucked it in, I guess, I guess, you know, if I have a little torch, I could focus on it, maybe put some cooling uh, stuff around, and, because this is like, it's, this copper, 
this bronze is probably different than whatever this this these this, these cones content you know what kind of metals they have again the mixture that they have so yeah so you know that's good for better than nothing um i'm just going to drill it out and we'll have a we'll have a loop again and then I'll get to the polishing, to the cleaning, but overall, over, overall, pretty strong, pretty solid, I'll tell you that. Okay, should be gentle. Oh yeah, yeah, that will jump on you. That will jump on you, so you gotta be careful. And I'm afraid to get too close, because if I go into my finger, they'll go right through. So we'll see, maybe I'll just put on the drill press and do it gently. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do, and then I'll go back and clean it up with, the, with all the beads, bits. Okay, so I got the hole in it. Now I'm gonna go very carefully with the uh, diamond cleaner. Yeah, yeah, because this will bite and rip. You know, this thing is very powerful. It'll just tear it out. So you better off him. You know, going just going slowly by slowly. Very slowly, with the right diamond bit. Just work at it. clean now let's get a little bore on the side as I tighten these I like to get snug then get a pull a good nice pull in and out Then I know that the uh, jaws are they meet evenly, and I can yank it down. Get a nice, nice clean up in there. Just go gently.
Yeah, the end of the project, might as well take a few more minutes, you know, and, uh, oh, I'm sorry, what was that? Might as well take a few more minutes and, you know, take your time, you know, because you're in the end. And what's left is polish, but you don't want the machine to re to rip it out. So just go slowly. Filing. I to get close in with my fingers. Yeah, I can feel it on my skin, but it kind of gives me a guide not to touch the middle, you know what I mean? Okay, give it a little polish.
getting there, you know, I work on it slowly. Put it aside, wow. It's hard to get there, huh? I hope that red doesn't polish it too much to take off some nasty stuff. Yeah, because I wasn't dealing, let's say, only with copper or gold or silver. Who knows what's in these coins? So when I was soldering it uh, together with the silver solder, so they start to pop up all kinds of colors. Probably folks out there know better than me exactly what that color means when it comes out. But uh, I'll polish it. We'll get it done. You can see it ready. Let's try to get some nice color to it, eh? You can oxidize it black, you know, on the high points. First, let me get it clean. Take off all that stuff, all that pipe. Whatever they call it. Yeah. Okay. See how it's coming out. I'm getting some red on it. Maybe every time I hit it with the water. I don't know. Anyhow. They are pretty nice, huh? 